Welcome everyone to the Women of Influence 2021 Luncheon. I'm Betsy Gardner Eckbert. I'm the President and CEO of the Winter Park Chamber of Commerce and it's a distinct privilege to welcome you here today where we are going to be celebrating so many special women and their contribution to our community. We are going to ask you please and thank you for wearing your masks when you're not at your table and thank you for going through our temperature check today. For now, those are still our protocols as we look out for the least comfortable and most vulnerable that are in our community. We will continue to monitor and make adjustments that we hope we'll be able to make very quickly and accordingly. And as I said today, we'll be celebrating so many special women who are doing amazing and dynamic things. But today, the most special woman in the world is with me today, and it's my daughter, Lucy Eckbert. Would you rise? So Lucy is beginning one of those first journeys as women in adulthood, and she's graduating from high school next year, so I was able to nab her today, and I'm really glad she's here. But today we're also going to celebrate Isis Jones and Lori Platt Hall and the graduates of Relaunch Class 10. For those of you who do not know, we piloted Relaunch as a workforce development solution in 2017. Relaunch career reentry for professional women is for any woman who's taken a career pause and wants to build her resume, her confidence, and her network through a curriculum that covers everything from getting the most out of LinkedIn to building your personal brand. And I wrote this curriculum because those are the things I wish somebody had told me when I went back to work after a 13-year career break. It was very, very difficult. And so I am thrilled that today our program, I think you can see there's a little map I'm going to show you. Today our program, because of being able to offer our program virtually, we are able to serve an audience no longer that's just in Winter Park. If you look at the map up here, you'll see that we're growing throughout Florida, and we had our first out-of-state class member in class 10. So what you'll also see on this slide is a graph that shows before and after self-reported confidence levels of our graduates. So if you see on the blue bars at the beginning, our graduates describe themselves as not at all confident or only somewhat confident. And the green bars is where we want to call your attention to. That's how our, our, our graduates report their confidence levels. They're either in somewhat or extremely confident at the end of the class. So that's what happens as a result of relaunch. And we know that anyone, whether they're male or female, that takes a six month, six month or longer gap from their work will experience a confidence gap that in many cases prevents talented people from re-entering the workplace. And we're thrilled that brilliant, driven, talented women are now serving our workforce uh, in greatly needed roles to help enhance our economy as we ramp back up, especially out of COVID. These women have worked very hard to get to this milestone, and we are just thrilled to celebrate with them today. We're also going to honor our 2021 Women of Influence and introduce our very first Women of Influence Lifetime Achievement winner. I'm very grateful we can do this in person today, especially after we were able to recognize people over Zoom last year. But before lunch is served, there are a few people I want to recognize. First of all, are there any past, present board members of the chamber or elected officials with us today? I know we're expecting Commissioner Sheila DeCicio. Thank you for joining us from the Winter Park City Commission. And if you're a past board member or current board member of the chamber, would you rise so we could thank you for your service? The Chamber's impact is greatest when partnered with community trustees like the ones who have chosen to sponsor today's event, and we are so grateful for that. Jill Schwartz and Associates and Orlando Health and Winnie Palmer Hospital for Women and Babies. And these are people who don't just write us checks. These are people who send their professional recruitment specialists to interview and mock interview, our, um, along with our full sale HR team who come and help us uh, get our graduates ready to enter the real world of interviewing. And we are so grateful that uh, Orlando Health and Jill S. Schwartz have sponsored this event today. I'd like to invite Dr. Patrice Cates Longberg of Orlando Health to join me. She's a primary care physician with Orlando Health Physician Associates, specializing in internal medicine, and will share a sponsor message with us today. Welcome, Dr. Patricia Cates Lomberger. Thank you. 
Thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, yes, my name is Patrice Cates Lonberger. I am an internist uh, with Orlando Health, currently practicing at the New Orlando Health Women's Pavilion um, here in Winter Park. Um, so I'm grateful and honored to represent Orlando Health today. Um, so Orlando Health is committed to supporting and empowering women in our community throughout their life cycle. One of our newest addition is the two-story, 20,800 square foot Orlando Health Women's Pavilion right here in Winter Park. The Women's Pavilion is a new healthcare experience designed exclusively for women. Some of our um, uh, amenities, if you will, is primary care, of which I serve as the primary care physician. There are other specialty um, physicians as well, or physician practices, including breast care, general surgery, endocrinology, cardiology. Um, we also have imaging and laboratory services available as well. And we are... Um, there to support the community and we hope to um, serve your primary care and your specialty care needs. While Orlando Health is proud to support the incredible work of the Winter Park Chamber of Commerce all year round, Winnie Palmer Hospital for Women and Babies couldn't be more pleased to support the innovative award-winning relaunch program and the Women of Influence event. Look around this room. We are surrounded by incredible women of influence in various stages of their professional and personal lives. Whether we are just starting out in this world or a seasoned professional or somewhere in between, we women are strong and we are leading in all facets of our lives. We are empowering our families to succeed. We are mentoring others in the workplace. We are advocating we are educating, we are supporting, and we are doing our very best to keep those around us thriving and healthy. For those of you graduating from the relaunch program today, I hope you recognize your own influence and the example that you've set for others around you. While you've continued your commitment to others, you've kept this commitment to yourself and your goals. And with every program session, networking event, resume change and LinkedIn update, you've invested in yourself and changed your future's trajectory. For that, I applaud you and wish each of you much success in your future endeavors. Finally, I want to thank Betsy and her team for allowing us to uh, take part in this life-changing program. You've really created something special for the women in our community. Orlando Health thanks you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kate Slonberger. Unfortunately, Jill Schwartz could not be here today, though we welcome her colleagues. We're thrilled that you're with us. Uh, she has sent a video message, which I'll ask for you to turn your eyes to the screen for now. Congratulations to all of the graduates of the relaunch program and to our 2021 honorees, Isis P. Jones and Laurie Platt Hall. We're delighted to again be a sponsor of this program because it's directly aligned with our mission as an employment law firm of empowering our clients to achieve their maximum potential in the workplace. Just a brief word about us. Our firm represents both employees and employers in issues such as discrimination, harassment, retaliation, based on age, race, religion, gender, pregnancy, disability, national origin, sexual orientation, and whistleblowers. We handle all types of workplace matters, including most recently COVID-19 issues. In our three decades representing and counseling a large and diverse number of female clients, I have observed some consistent qualities that women, all of you, uniquely bring to the workplace. Women are great communicators. I've observed that women have strong networking skills. Women's sensitivity, intuition, and emotional intelligence, EQ, not just IQ, help to create a more well-rounded workforce. You tend to be givers, encouraging, inspiring, and motivating your colleagues. Women value relationships, stand up for their beliefs, and explore opportunities. You generally have outstanding time management skills, owing to the many roles you have to assume, often wearing heels. I've noticed that women tend to bring optimism, 
and positivity to a workplace. And finally, I have seen that women have excellent focus and are extremely adept at overcoming obstacles. Apropos to this last point, I personally understand the dedication it took for each and every one of you to be here today. I'm the daughter of a single mother who through great adversity was forced to become the sole supporter of her three young children. Without the benefit of a college education, she established a successful and financially rewarding career as a political writer. She continues this work today at the age of 85 years young. I've seen what is possible and I know what is possible for every woman in this room. When meeting with your future employer, remember what makes you such an invaluable asset to their workplace. And remember, believe in yourself and so will others. We're so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you again to Jilla Schwartz and Associates for their continuing partnership. Now I'd like to thank the supporting sponsors of today's event, Orange Tree Staffing and Winter Park Magazine, and a big thank you to our in-kind sponsors. You're going to see all the loot on your table. You've got a box of Girl Scout cookies, and the reason why is this is an action step. Our Girl Scout Citrus Council were not able to sell through all their cookies this year, and they've called us to action to remind you that you can get online and order cookies from their stuffed warehouse because of COVID. They've been disrupted in their cookie sales, and we're counting on you guys to help close the gap. We also want to thank Liz Lily Pulitzer, who wardrobed Manette Marcial of Connect to Create Media, who's serving as our program consultant to the chamber, and you'll be hearing from her later. And you'll see a Lily bag with a gift certificate in each one of your uh, spots there. We want to thank Jen Adams Photography, as always. All the pictures from today will be up on the Chamber Facebook page, and you can download them and share them. And then Farm Gal Flowers did our beautiful centerpieces today. We're going to call you now to enjoy your lunch, and we'll be back in a few moments to celebrate our graduates and our Women of Influence winners. And I love that we've got Isis's husband, Gary Jones, a very able photographer, taking pictures of the tables. This is fabulous. Give Gary a round of applause. We love, we really do love the men that have spent time with us here today. We really appreciate your caring about what we're doing here today and voting with your feet to spend time with us today. So Gary's a great role model for that. We really appreciate your being here. So I'd like to, at this point, invite a very special person up, and that's Manette Marcial. She's with Connect to Create Media, and she's currently serving as our program's consultant to the chamber. Um, Manette is not only a colleague, but a dear friend, and our program has been made so much better uh, by her addition to our team, even on an interim and consulting basis. Uh, Manette is a relaunch graduate herself. She helped lead, lead class 10 and did a fantastic job at that. Uh, would you please join me in wel welcoming Manette Marcial to the stage? Thank you, Betsy. Well, every relaunch story is unique. It's personal. And my relaunch story began in 2017, even though I didn't realize it. Um, I just knew that I was ready for change. I'd invested 13 years with the Walt Disney World Company in learning and development with Disney University, Disney Institute, Disney's professional development programs, and then I parlayed up to the Coca-Cola Company to continue my training work for another six years with their domestic national sales team and their frontline sales leaders. So it was time for something new. I actually began working with a life coach and to help resort and reprioritize my life. I was visualizing and doing all the right things and all the work. And so finally, I was ready. And then life happened. One month later, in August of 2017, my nephews were in a car accident. Both nephews were in one car together. And then a month later, in September, Hurricane Irma dispersed me from my, and displaced me from my house. And then in October, on the weekend of my birthday, I learned that my father had pancreatic cancer. I wasn't going anywhere. Like many of us in relaunch, there is that unexpected higher calling that presents itself, that suddenly disrupted our lives, and willingly, in love, we rise to the challenge. 
we rise to the calling. After eight months of caretaking, my father passed, and I went back to work, because that's what we do, right? We continue. We press on. But I was unaware of the burnout that was buried under many layers of grief until the burnout caught up with me. And I made the choice to just stop. I pressed pause. From 2018 into 2019, I fumbled. I took care of family business. I took care of my father's things while I just allowed myself to grieve. But suddenly I found myself in a new stage and phase of life. I looked up, finally truly looked up, and realized that so much around me had changed. I lost track of the changes in technology and how business was being conducted. I lost track with my friends and with life in general, with social media. So once began, the fog began to lift, I decided it was time to rejoin the workforce and get back at it. And this was around November, December of 2019. Needless to say, having two Fortune 100 companies on my resume was no match for a global pandemic. But I kept trying. Online application after online application, I just kept pressing on. <clears throat> and every day with every application, I was feeling more and more massively irrelevant. And then a friend forwarded me an email about this online class called Relaunch. And I can neither confirm nor deny I may have rolled my eyes. <laughs> After all, I was a learning and development professional that worked with Disney and Coca-Cola. But I also remembered I was a learning and development professional who pressed pause and was still unemployed. So <laughs> that fact uh, was much greater than my pride. And so I signed up for the class. And just as class 10, here at these front tables, um, have discovered it was nothing that I had uh, expected. Relaunch is so much more than reworking your resume or a get back to work workshop. It's a class that actually pushes all your buttons in all the right ways about all facets of your life to get to the core of who you are and to get to the core of what you want and how you want to contribute. Relaunch challenges you to own all of your life experience, which ironically, at this stage of our game, that's the actual gold that we're bringing to the table, even though it feels amazingly vulnerable and even when not everyone recognizes it. Relaunch also helped me appreciate my pause. It was through the class that I was reminded that I was so much more than 18 years with two companies. I was a creative woman who loved my family, I cultivated skills from all areas of my life, family, corporate, media, consulting, volunteerism, hobbies and interests. It reminded me that life happens in seasons and there really are times to press pause because it's the right thing to do. And there, as such, there are times to start over. So I have come back from my pause grounded with my priorities reset encouraged and clear, revitalized and empathetic. So I'll leave you with the words <clears throat> that are, have become the rallying cry for my family. So when my, my grandfather was attempting to woo my grandmother to move to America from Cuba, he presented her with this beautiful hand fan and tucked inside of the hand fan holder, there was this little business card where he professed his love. And almost as an afterthought, he inscribed these words, no tienes miedo, fe y adelante. And what that means is don't have fear, don't be afraid, faith and forward. So to class 10, I say, fe y adelante. As you begin setting up coffees and meeting new people to explore what needs they might have, faith and forward as you rework that elevator pitch for the thousandth time and tweak your LinkedIn yet once again, Fe y adelante as you dare to dream of what this next phase of life holds for you. Faith and forward as you dare to be someone new, to try something new and tap into the gold that's been accumulating all these years. It's been such an honor and a privilege to join you all, Class 10, in this journey. I'm proud of how you showed up, of your contribution, what you've accomplished so far, and I'm very excited about what's yet to come. Thank you and congratulations. <clears throat> and
And now I'd like to invite Dr. Kate Slonberger of Orlando Health and Betsy Gardner Eckbert to join me and the graduates to help us with our graduation ceremony, ladies, as we celebrate the class of Relaunch Class 10. Valerie Anthony. <clears throat> Hannah Vasansine. Lisa Clute. Christina Lima. Jan Tews. Melissa Vaughn. <clears throat> Sonia Wilder Johnson. <clears throat> Sharon Wolber. <clears throat> and Christine Wood. Now we do have some graduates who could not be with us here today. We have Rosemary Locke who lives in New Jersey because we are a national program. And Jody Batista and Debbie Morris who recently secured employment, which is the best reason not to be at the Women of Influence Luncheon. <clears throat> So congratulations to each and every one of you. You're now part of the Relaunch alumni community of more than 100 people. I know you go on to great success and continue to stay in touch and network. And we at the Chamber definitely look forward to celebrating your successes with you and staying in touch. So now one of our graduates, Melissa Vaughn, is going to share with us her journey and what this program has meant to her. Melissa is an experienced trial lawyer with over a decade of experience in New York and Florida prosecuting major felonies, narcotic cases, career criminals, homicides, sexual batteries, crimes against children, and more. You want Melissa in your corner. An assistant state attorney with Broward County, she won convictions in many high-profile cases. She has a passion for justice and for public advocacy, especially involving individuals with disabilities and the hard of hearing community. She's become an advocate for families of children with special needs who are struggling in school by helping them navigate the public school system and obtain special educational services and accommodations. Please help me welcome Melissa Vaughn. Hello, everyone. In 2005, the Harvard Business Review carried an article called Off-Ramps and On-Ramps, Keeping Talented Women on the Road to Success. It noted that nearly 43% of highly qualified women voluntarily leave their careers for a significant amount of time, primarily to raise children or care for aging family members. Eventually, most of those women want to return to the workforce, but some don't know how or don't even know if it's possible. Until recently, I was one of those women. In 2010, I left my position as a prosecutor in South Florida to focus on my family. My son was born hard of hearing, so I tasked myself with becoming an expert on hearing loss. I learned about language development, early intervention, deaf culture and sign language. I learned about speech therapy, auditory verbal therapy, and took him from hearing aids to cochlear implants. I became involved in special education advocacy and disability advocacy. It was a busy time. And as he grew into his own advocacy, and as he neared the end of elementary school, I decided it was time for me to think about my next step and my professional future but I didn't know where to start, and I felt overwhelmed. And then I picked up a local Winter Park magazine and read about the relaunch program. I signed up for this class hoping to gain new confidence 
and a community of supportive women in similar circumstances. Well, I found those things, but so much more. You see, there's a tendency for women who've paused their careers to be almost apologetic about that decision, to undervalue or underestimate their qualifications or what they can offer to future employers. What relaunch gave me was a new perspective on myself, on my credentials, and what I could offer future employers. I realized I didn't stop working or otherwise stagnate in those years I took to focus on my family. Far from it, what I had done was use the skills I had as a lawyer and the skills I learned as a mother to broaden my knowledge and develop expertise in new areas. I was better than I had been before. I also learned that my values, some of them had changed over time, and with them my definition of success and what I see for my future. As my classmates and I got to know each other during this program as we shared resumes and we discussed achievements and accomplishments, both past and future and present, what struck me was this. If we'd been impressive in our careers before, and we were, we were even more formidable now for having taken those pauses. On our last class, we saw a slide, and it had a quote by the Roman philosopher Seneca the Stoic, and it read, it is the power of the mind to be unconquerable. And as I stand here today, a relaunch graduate with my classmates, I can say when I think about the future, I am truly excited to see all the ways we're going to be unconquerable. Thank you. As we like to say, you do not want to be on the wrong side of Melissa Vaughn. <laughs> and I, for one, know that she can do anything, but I love the idea of her prosecuting career criminals and getting back in that game. But it'll be interesting to see where she goes next. And one of the reasons why I'm thrilled that Melissa took the chance to share her experience, and Melissa, thank you for doing that, is that Melissa is extraordinary but she's very, very typical of the women that come to us with amazing strategic communication and other skills that can make a difference. And I'll ask you today, can one of them make a difference in one of your businesses? So I'm gonna shift focus here because one of the things we wanna do in this program is make sure that we are honoring role models, that we are presenting role models and I'm gonna brag on Winnie Palmer just for a minute. I brought my daughter here today because she's entering nursing school in August. And when I went to college, if you were entering nursing school, you maybe had two or three other options besides being a bedside nurse. In my mother's generation, if she went to nursing school, being a bedside nurse was the only option. Today, we have Winnie Palmer Hospital represented here with a CEO that started as a bedside nurse. My daughter knows because Kelly Neerstadt is the CEO of Winter Park, Winter Palmer, Winnie Palmer Hospital that being a CEO of a hospital is one of the available options for her. Kelly Neerstadt is a role model for my daughter and many of you are role models for other people. And when we tell people what the available options are, we can now dream great dreams. And today we're gonna to present two women of influence today who we're holding up as examples of people who can help us expand the available options, help us to dream great dreams, and inspire us to be more like them because they've brought so many other people along with them. So these are pioneers who, with grace and dignity, have shattered ceilings made of glass and broke down barriers for us all. How I wish the work with this was complete. As long as we continue, though, to make seats at the table for women in the talent pipeline, we will need to tell the stories of women who use their influence for both excellent commercial outcomes and for the benefit of their communities. Many of you as relaunchers began a second chapter in your adult lives by taking the step to close your own confidence gap and return to work. The average relauncher is in her mid-40s which goes to show that the second chapter can be a time of rapid innovation for women in the second half of their lives. 
Today, we're gonna to be honoring our 2021 Woman of Influence, but we'll also be giving our very first Lifetime Achievement Award to a woman who's been doing this for a long time and is in no way finished making an impact in her community and in the lives of others. And it's not atypical for the residents of the Mayflower in doing so. She is my mentor, she is my friend, she is my ally. Lori Platt Hall rode the wave, the first wave of women who benefited from the Equal Opportunity Employment Act in the 1970s, breaking into two of the most male-dominated industries in the country, electric utilities and oil. She was one of the first women to serve as a special assistant to the mayor of the city of Orlando when she was appointed staff director by then mayor Bill Frederick. During her career in advertising, public and government relations, she helped pave the way for the women who followed, often being the first to hold highly visible positions with significant responsibility. She demonstrated that women could not only excel at what they had been in jobs held typically by men, but also by bringing specific assets and insights engendered by their own experience as women to enhance strategic decision making from Sierra Pacific Power Company to Atlantic Richfield to Tupperware, she had a measurable impact in advancing corporate goals and protecting corporate interests. Everything she's learned along the way, she now shares with nonprofits while also mentoring women like me in various stages of their careers and lives. In other words, she continues to lift those around her. Please, would you join me in honoring Lori Platt Hall? Lori, will you join us on the stage? I hate crying in public. <laughs> I have a reputation not, of not doing that. Um, I can't even express how much this means to me, especially from Betsy and this chamber. So I will try to recompose. Um, I really am honored to have achieved this award from you all. And I'm really overwhelmed by the talent of the women who have gone through the relaunch program very high-powered group if you read everybody's bio. Um, so I'm honored to share this stage with them and I'm really looking forward to, to hearing Isis Jones. When I was promoted, I'm gonna tell you a war story, folks. When I was promoted to regional director of state and local government relations at Atlantic Richfield, in 1977, I became the third highest placed woman in a company of 52,000 and I held a job that no woman had ever held before, as far as I know, not only in the company, but the industry, I know in the company. And um, we had acquired, the company had just acquired Kennecott Copper, and um, my counterpart at Kennecott Copper called me up to introduce himself, and uh, he said in his broad Oklahoma accent, isn't it nice a sweet young thing like you got a big job like that? <laughs> <clears throat> My notes say I was furious. I wanted to kill him through the phone. <laughs> um, but I said in my sweetest voice, gosh, at 37, I never thought I would ever be called a sweet young thing again. <laughs> again. <laughs> Today, I can only say that at 79, I never thought I would be receiving this award, and I am deeply honored and grateful. But this award really belongs to my first mentor, a public relations professional named Peggy Nicholson Sadler, who took a chance and made me her apprentice in the mid-1960s at the Baltimore Museum of Art. All that followed in my career began with her generosity, and all I have tried to do is pay that forward. Times have changed, but women still face challenges in the workplace, especially those who pause their careers to raise families or care for parents. I think the chamber is the true mentor here today, providing them with the skills they need to create their own bright futures. Um, since I have never had the opportunity, however, to mentor 12 people at once, but 
especially wonderful women like you all. I would like to share some insights that I wish I had known when I was moving along in my career. However, I'm a bit daunted now with my remarks because there's so much talent and so much expertise among the women that are graduating today that I fear I'm preaching to the choir. But I will go ahead and share them uh, because I wanted to say that after you get established and you get a track record, your reputation will play an increasingly important role in advancing your career. Who you are will always speak louder than anything you say. Building a good reputation requires consistency and alignment in speech and action over time and is easy to lose. Resiliency is also important and it will enable you to stay calm in crises, bounce back from failures, and adapt more easily to changing circumstances. So here are the recommendations I was going to make before I read your resumes. <laughs> One, develop a personal mission, a purpose that is greater than your job and greater than yourself. And they say that's what makes companies successful is getting their employees to feel they're doing something truly important. It will root your life in core values, keep, help you keep things in proportion, enhance your sense of self-worth, and remind you that the job is not who you are. Two, have integrity and use it. Do the right thing even if it's unpopular. It builds trust and respect and you will sleep better at night. Three, when you must choose between two options, choose the kind one. A corollary is to treat everyone you meet with the same courtesy you would give a CEO. Kindness and consideration are scarce commodities. Four, cultivate an attitude of gratitude even when you are not feeling grateful. It helps to right-size the ego, build self-esteem and a positive view, and will attract people to you. And I learned that in a 12-step program and then paid $600 to be told it by a major national coach. So <laughs> now you know what that one's worth. It's, it is life-changing and was for me. Five, be optimistic. Optimism enables you to see opportunities and have energy to pursue them. Pessimism saps energy and cripples innovation, especially when facing difficulties. And frankly, no one likes to be around Eeyore. <laughs> Focus on principles, not personalities. And this, I think, is enormously important for women many of whom have never played team sports. We have to be willing to work with people who have may have been nasty and cut us, but to work on a team and the organizations to succeed, we have to move ahead and build relationships that are functional. And do not confide details of your private life to friends at work. There is no place for that in the workplace, and there is no privacy and confidentiality either. Um, rem seven, remember you are human. Everyone makes mistakes. Learn from them and learn to let them go and move on, just as kids learn in team sports. One of my mottos is progress, not perfection, even though I strive for perfection every day. Eight, learn to laugh at yourself, and if you lack a sense of humor, find one. <laughs> humor signals self-esteem, it enhances social interactions, and it, they studies show it enhances learning. Nine, realize early that everything you do, every experience you have, every skill you gain will prove invaluable sometime in your future, and often in unexpected ways. And I think you all have learned that graduating from this program. 10, finally do not be embarrassed to ask for help when you need it. And find a mentor or advisor you can trust. Frankly, I wish I had done more of that in my career. Thank you for this wonderful honor. 
and congratulations to these amazing graduates and congratulations to Isa Jones, the 2021 Woman of Influence. Now for our 2021 Woman of Influence. Year in and year out, we want this woman to serve as a powerful role model. And we don't want to measure a woman that only measures success economically. A real woman of influence is someone who makes everything around her better. That includes measuring the ways she allows and encourages everyone around her to rise. When we think about women with that kind of impact, naturally, Isis P. Jones comes to mind. ISIS serves as Full Sail University's Chief Information Officer, as well as its Executive Director of Education. During her nearly three decades at Full Sail, the institution has grown from offering two certificate programs to awarding undergraduate and graduate level degrees in numerous specializations in the fields of emerging technology, media production, and entertainment. She earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Information Systems and Computer Programming and became not only one of the youngest employees, but the second of only two women to join the systems programming team in 1984 at Harcourse, Brace, and Jovanovich. In 1988, she became IT consultant for Full Sail. In the early 1990s, ISIS authored one of the nation's first digital media degrees for Full Sail. She also authored and managed the development and deployment of numerous other campus-based degree programs, as well as the origination and evolution of Full Sail's virtual education efforts. I can only imagine how busy she's been over the past year. Since becoming Full Sail's Chief Information Officer and Executive Director of Education, the university has received numerous awards celebrating its innovation. And over the past year, she has been recognized for her part in the college's outstanding COVID-19 response. Would you please join me in welcoming to the stage our 2021 Women of Influence, Isis P. Jones of Full Sail University. Wow. Thank you, Betsy. What, a, what an amazing program you've put together. So, so, so inspiring. And, uh, and Lori, it's, uh, it's just an honor to be sharing a stage with you. Uh, I'm truly humbled and, and not worthy of all the, <laughs> of your ama amazing accomplishments and everything that you've done through the years. So thank, thank you for what you've done for the community and thank you for what you've done for women for the past however many decades, few decades. So, where do I begin? So when, uh, when Betsy called me and said, um, ISIS, I have, you know, I thought it was something to do with, you know, sponsoring an event at our, at our house or at Full Sail. And she presented to me that I would be uh, honored uh, to be a woman of influence of 2021. And I'm like, me? I, are you, I mean, does she, has she, <laughs> has she done her homework? Uh, and then I started thinking, it's like, oh my God, women of influence in 2020, I'm thinking of people like Belinda Gates, you know, or Ozil uh, Terucci, who's the, you know, the, the chief medical officer for BioNTech. Those are women of influence. And then I did a quick Google and I saw, and I found Britney, not Britney Spears, I found Taylor Swift as a woman of influence in 2020. I said, well, there's something for everybody. I think I'm gonna be okay. <laughs> so, uh, no, sorry for any Britney fans. Uh, <laughs> the, so I'm going to start with uh, three small uh, vignettes, um, starting out with when I started to think of you amazing women that are in the, the, the power and the courage uh, to come back into the workforce uh, and how scary that may be. And immediately I thought of uh, my main mentor, um, Raida Pita, my mother. Oh, I'm going to get emotional. I'm doing this for you, Laurie, so you're not the only person who cries, cried up here. Uh, and, uh, and just as a brief history, I was born in 1963 uh, in Havana, Cuba, in mid-communism. Uh, terrible time to be born as my family was trying to exit uh, communism. 
And my father was an electronic engineer, and back then you could still leave uh, legally, but you had to serve the country, and he had to become a political prisoner where he lost 80 pounds, was terribly abused, and couldn't see his family for two years. Um, my mother was a fine artist of portrait art, very specific kind of uh, skill set. Uh, we exiled to Spain, to Madrid, Spain. My father was originally from Spain. It was an easier path uh, to get out um, legally during those, during those years through Spain. And then we arrived in uh, Tampa in 1973. Uh, shortly after we arrived, my dad died of a massive heart attack at the age of 47. My mother did, um, my father, one of the things, he was the most amazing man in the world next to Gary Jones. <laughs> Uh, and he had elevated my mother all through her career of art and uh, music writing and such. So um, she didn't write checks. She didn't run really the household. She didn't drive because she didn't need to drive in Havana or Madrid. And she didn't speak English because we had just arrived at this country. So immediately everybody was giving her the advice, okay, you have three children to feed. You have to put a roof over their heads and you have to go work at a factory and giving her applications and things of that nature. And my mom's like, wait a minute, I am a portrait artist. <laughs> Uh, quickly, everybody went to say, well, you know, in America, portrait art is not a thing. People consider that conceited, and that's more of a Spanish culture. And she's like, so she rose, and my mom is a very timid, anxious uh, person. And to see her strength rise and decide, I'm going to be a portrait artist, and that's what she went on to do. She had to travel to Puerto Rico and Costa Rica, and sometimes in dangerous conditions, but... She rose to wind up painting uh, prime ministers, presidents, dignitaries, cardinals, and she not only was able to put a roof over her head, she was able to put us through private education, all three children, all the while, never uh, missing a beat on the most uh, amazing unconditional love, which has been the, my greatest influence in life. So, um, so to you guys, you know, my mother was able to relaunch and at, at the age of 46, and then shortly, uh, not shortly, but not too long ago, um, at the age of 83, we're sitting around at a dinner table, and she's talking to Gary about how uh, she always thought she was going to be a professional songwriter, but she thought that the art was more of a solid thing. Imagine that. Uh, so, <laughs> and uh, so she had written over 40 songs, beautiful songs, both uh, lyrics and, uh, and music, and, uh, and Gary says, well, then we have to make an album. So... Off we went to uh, Miami Criteria Sound Studios. We didn't want to burden full sale, and he wanted to give her the entire experience as somebody would have had, you know, in the 1980s. And we hired our uh, 21 Grammy Award winning Sebastian uh, to produce her album. Well, that year, he got Producer of the Year for her album and two other projects. He presented her his gold Grammy. And my mother, at the age of 83, uh, was, a, was a recipient of a Grammy for her, for her album. So you, she... <laughs> so she did it at 46. She didn't lose her dreams at 83. So I, I say, go for it, class. <laughs> you know, so. Um, so second chapter... And this one, I'm going to, it's, it's about how I got into IT uh, as a young woman in the, um, in the 80s. And, uh, and I call it skirts and pubs, but there's more to that story. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't let it scare you. Uh, so with the inspiration of uh, having lost my dad and seeing my mom have to struggle so difficult, one of, one of the things I decided early on, I started working at the age of 17. And... Uh, and never looked back. I worked the entire time that I went to school because I never wanted to be caught off guard or rely on anyone um, for, um, for my finances. So um, I got a job at a hospital where they had just received uh, their very first mainframe, and that's where my interest completely switched in light. And then I got to uh, Orlando in 1981 or something like that, and uh, a new company called Hardcore Brace Jovanovich. Well, they weren't new, but they were new to Orlando had moved in and I thought this is a beautiful place. I had an IT department of 200. I applied even though I had no skills really at that, at that point. I was able to get the job and was thrilled. Uh, but at the time, even though it was in the 80s, if you can believe still in the 80s, uh, Mr. William Jovanovich didn't allow women to enter the building unless they, were, they wore skirts and pantyhose. 
So uh, I didn't think anything of it at the time. I was so thrilled to get the job. Sure, I'll put on my skirts and pantyhose, but I didn't realize that the job that I had taken would require me to crawl under computer floors, chasing cables to install big controllers in the mainframes and things. And I'm like, how am I going to do this? So you know, I had a couple of choices. I could have gone to HR and said, this is impossible and this is ridiculous, but I really wanted this job really bad. So I bought longer skirts and thicker pantyhose and went at it. <laughs> um, so shortly after there was a position uh, open in their more elite group of the systems programmers, which is really what I wanted to do and, where, uh, and what I was studying for. And, uh, and I applied, again, not thinking I would get it because I, I still didn't have quite the qualifications that I needed to, to be there. And through this mentor who had seen me, you know, crawling through computer floors with my, <laughs> with my thick stockings, um, de decided to give me a shot. So I joined, I was so happy, I joined this elite team and there's, you know, here's the other 11 of those system programmers and they're in their 50, 40s and 50s and they're a little crunchy, they smoked and they were not happy to have a young female kind of ruin their groove. They couldn't talk about their, you know, wings at Hooters and things of that nature. So I, um, and so they used to talk behind my back and they would whisper and, I, and I'm thinking, these are brilliant people and I need their help and they were allergic to me. So in uh, one of the times I overheard them talking about going to this Irish pub that they used to go through to shoot darts. And I'm like, well, you know, I grew up kind of a tomboy with my cousins. I'm good at darts. I showed up uninvited. I ordered my beer and I crashed their game. And uh, from that moment forward, you know, meeting at them where they were at, everything changed for me. And not only, so what turned out to be a slight dis discrimination wind up actually being something that lifted me beyond what I even deserved because they, they were so uh, grateful, they looked after me, I learned so much from them. And, uh, and I tell that story because sometimes when you think about the position that you're in, um, you, you should never accept anything that is bad behavior in, uh, and people are acting poorly. But a lot of times discrimination comes in very different flavors, whether it's you know gender or race or whatever, and you have to meet people halfway where they're at if you want them to meet you. If you immediately say, no, this is not for me, and you, and you, I'm, you, know, you become a crybaby because you're not being treated as an equal, you first have to meet that group, you know, take, make that sacrifice, meet them halfway, and they will meet you back the other way. So that's part of that advice that I, that I, that I would have. Um, so moving on to vignette, um, Oh, and the other, uh, the other point I wanted to make is um, wherever you're at, whether you're in a position of leadership or not, uh, act like a leader, and that will always serve you well. And, and, and by a leader, I don't mean bossiness, but always treat yourself with the respect that you, you are able to lead, and you're always able to lead others. And if, with all the mothers and, that we have in this room, you know that you're all natural born leaders, so. Um, so thing yet number three, is um, you know the path to success is not always as planned, and even though I just made this big pitch, you know at Full Sail, every you know our motto is you know follow your dreams, we take your dreams seriously, and even though I just made that point about my mother about sticking with her dreams, uh, when I in 1988 uh, I was already I had been head um, hunted to another company called Cebus, and I was about to uh, be dispatched to Japan for six months to install a new mainframe for the very first Japanese cellular phone grid system. And although that was in a very exciting notion and I was very proud, I was scared to death. It's like, cause I had to go there by, my, my, by myself first. And at the time I was still doing some um, side work with Full Sail with uh, John Phelps, the founder and, you know, and Gary. And I was trying to help them get up in running on their systems for, they were great at the technology and media, but they did everything else manually. So, and they, so John says, why don't you come work for us? Cause he saw my hesitation about going to Japan. And I'm like, uh, work where my husband works, lose all my self identity, no way. Uh, plus I'll be the IT department of one and I work for an IT department of 200, I have so much to learn. And so he was smart and he's very persuasive. Anybody who knows John Phelps here is extremely persuasive. And he says, look, Isis, why don't you, we really need you. Come help us move into this new building. We'll hold your job for six months. In six months, replace yourself and then move back into corporate America and I'll hold your job for as long as you, as long as you want. I'm like, well, that I can get next to. I can help them out. It gets me out of my, this gut intuition where I didn't want to go to Japan. 
Uh, one quick story, I will say that the week I was supposed to arrive in Japan, there was one of the biggest earthquakes in Tokyo. And had I gone, <laughs> uh, I'm really glad that I made the other choice. So, um, so moving on 31 years later, uh, I've gotten to do so many things. Uh, so it was definitely the, the, the best decision. And having a partner by my side uh, that you know was never an issue of whether you're being, if you're under, you know, or reporting to, he has been the best partner in the whole wide world over the last 31 years. Uh, I still, to this day, become energized, but I have to tell you that most of the influence comes from, like, part, there's a small uh, sample of that uh, across there with the, some of the most amazing women and people and just, just so full employees. I got bit in the neck and I never was able to look back and I've held many, many different hats. My favorite thing to do is to solve problems. So even though I have this big lofty title, really, you know, the, the magic comes from the people that surround me. And there's something, that if the biggest thing that I can impart is that you can only do something with a community and a team. You can never do something on your own. No matter how skilled you are, no matter what you have, uh, you know, make, you know, be part of that team. So in closing, uh, what I wanted to address is like, well, what does influence mean to me? You know, we all have uh, a lot of capital to contribute, you know, to our work, society, you know, our mission, our homes, um, influencers. Uh, we have a lot of mothers and caretakers in this room. And I have to say they're one of the biggest influencers in humanity. When you think about every single, the power of words, all your words are what leads to successful human beings. Uh, that's just a, a, unbelievable. Um, some of my biggest mentors, we started with my mother, my sister, an amazing mother, many of my colleagues, uh, just amazing. So if you can do that, you can do anything, <laughs> so, uh, really. Uh, but it, I, I forgot to have children myself, but uh, I, <laughs> but it was, it was mainly, uh, I promise you this is true. It was mainly, I just never thought I could be up for the task. I really recognized that that was the absolute hardest job in the whole wide world. So I kept postponing it. It's like, oh, not now, not now. So uh, yeah, I forgot to have children. Uh, but you know, we all have something to contribute, you know, whether you're the head of a you know, biotech company or whether you're Britney Spears telling everybody to shake it off. Um, <laughs> Some, uh, you know, in some of the recent uh, leadership literature, people talk about, you know, four different types of capital. Uh, one being social capital. You know, we have, you know, Betsy, how brilliant are you in, uh, in, in, at that? It's people who connect each other, people who make others successful. Gary's brilliant at that as well. And then there's influential capital, and those are people who just, it, by, they influence strictly by their title. You know, whether they became a governor or whether they are, um, yeah, so it's, it's all, big title base. Financial capital, we don't have to explain what that is and, and how that influences. And then the human skills capital. So, you know, whether you're a CFO or whether, you know, you're the head of the emerging tech program or the head of academic innovation, uh, it, all of those things are your capital that you're contributing, you know, to something greater. Uh, but I would have to say, and, you know, and Jill mentioned it earlier in her video, is that, you know, I think there's a fifth capital that's probably one of the most important, and that's optimism. And when you can influence a situation with hope, um, innovation, a little humor, when you try to rise above the fray, and uh, that could be the single most important capital contribution that you bring to the table, to a room, to a meeting, to a company. Um, you know, words are extremely powerful. They can immediately lift someone or they can put them down and you can never get anywhere by, by putting people down. It doesn't, it doesn't ever, ever work. Um, so, you know, optimism brings people together. It brings hope and we certainly need a whole bunch of hope right now. And so learn to be the, you know, the giver in that situation and not the taker. You know, sometimes we need that and it's easy to take from, from others who are optimists, but just when you walk into a room, just remember, you know, you have the power to lift that room or to bring it down. Um, I submit to this class that, you know, you have way more to offer in the workforce than a freshly graduated MBA or PhD or even other people who have been 
uh, at work. I mean, you have been, you know, the CEOs of your household. You have been moms. You have been caretakers. You have to, those are the hardest jobs in the whole wide world. It takes emotional intelligence. It takes patience. It takes uh, resilience. I'm telling you, most people don't don't have those those skills. So don't underestimate that. And it isn't a gimme because of the audience that we have. That is that is for real. That is it's it's an incredible. Um, that you have to offer is incredible. So uh, figure out what the rest of your capital contribution is and just lean into it. So at, you know, at Full Sail, I had the, the privilege to maybe have influenced a few of our 70,000 grads or, you know, 2,300 uh, employees. Uh, but my, you know, my biggest worth comes from the people who have influenced me, some who are sitting here our Hall of Fame graduates, and most definitely my family. So I wouldn't definitely not be who I am today, you know, without without them. So I submit to this class that you've already influenced beyond what you can imagine, and you're the most prepared to continue uh, with those contributions. So go get them, and uh, I wish you success in your journey. How poetic that Isis is rocking this suit made of pants. <laughs> um, when you reach that level of play, you can wear whatever you want. So I absolutely love it, Isis. And I remember being told I had to wear a skirt and pantyhose too. So we rise, ladies, we rise. This is fabulous. Isis, when you asked the ridiculous question, why on earth would I want you to deliver this speech? I think you just answered your own question. How about a round of applause for that amazing speech? Okay, so we are not done inspiring you guys. So I'm guessing everyone in this room is wondering, you got so much swag on your table, we gotta call your attention to a teeny tiny martini glass on your table. And you're probably wishing that there wasn't what we call silver excelsior in that glass, but an actual martini. But on July 22nd, we are gonna have the opportunity to sip actual martinis. And so I'd like members of my team to come forward really quickly, because we have a cool announcement. And um, if y'all can get kind of close to your little teeny tiny martini glasses, we are going to announce our next event, which we know is going to inspire you. So, are we in place, guys? Everybody ready? Okay, um, so on three, two, one, we're gonna tell you what we're doing next. Ready? Three, two, one. Boom. <laughs> we are announcing Soiree, our summer happening. And so, thank you guys. So we give you guys a lot of surveys throughout the year, and in case you're wondering if we ever read them, we read them. We read them in our staff meeting every Monday morning, and we've noticed a theme. And that theme is you want us to bring you together, and you want fun. Do you guys remember fun? Does everybody remember it? Okay. Well, I encourage all of the women in this room not to miss out on summer soiree. We're going to have a great time. We're going to be hearing about how to have, are you ready, events and entertaining again. We're going to learn how to make charcuterie boards and gorgeous flower arrangements and how to have a great time entertaining people. Uh, and so we know you're going to be inspired. It's a mini conference, and it's going to be at the Orlando Mu Museum of Art on July 22nd. Here's what's great. You don't even have to think about it. Take your cell phone which you know how to do, and put it on the QR code on the very back of your little soiree tag on your martini glass. And you've got two little chocolates there to remind you that we're going to have a great time at this event. So you can register today. I promise you this event is going to vaporize. Its registration is open as of right now. And we'd love for you to come and bring a gang of gal pals with you to this event. So um, this will feature demonstrations, as I said, vendors. We're going to have a fashion show and then all that uh, registration information is just as easy as your QR code on the back. So take your little martini glass with you. So if you'll join me in raising your little glass to a toast, we are going to have some fun at the summer soiree. Cheers. 
So, as we close today, we want to remind you again of how important role modeling is. Today, we're holding up two examples of women who've not only made it, but they always stay focused on bringing others along with them. Our challenge to you today is to make sure you bring someone along with you. You have the opportunity and the obligation to be women of influence yourselves. When you leave here today, we want you to leave with a woman in mind who, can who you can encourage to apply to relaunch. What happens is that people are aware of what we're doing, but they think it's only going to work for somebody else, not for them. That confidence gap is real, and we need you to go to those individuals and say, I know this will work for you too. So we've got a card that's inside your program that may have fallen out and be on your table now. You've also got a pen from Orange Tree Staffing. We'd like you to write down the name and either the phone number or email of that woman so we can contact her. And then we're going to count on you to contact her and say, this will work for you too. We've done a great job of making people aware of this program, but we cannot close the gap strictly with our marketing. We need you to stand in that gap, stand next to that woman and say, this will work for you too. So there's a staff member who's gonna be at the door to collect these cards as you exit. Please make sure you include the contact information and the name. I wanna thank, before we close, my team who have just an absolutely unbelievable job of executing this event today. And I wanna say thank you to our chamber members and our board of directors who never blinked when I put this program in front of them, and it's our members, it's the men in this room, it's members who are continuing to help transform workplaces and lives with the power of relaunch. So we want to thank our chamber members for all you do today, too. And if you're not a chamber member, we can help you with that. For information, you can just go to winterpark.org or we've got staff in the back that can answer your questions about that. And as I've said, we're very much back to in-person business at, at the chamber and our events, and we're wel ready to welcome more businesses and individuals to our community. In any event, we hope the speakers, the graduates, and our guests have enjoyed being together today as much as we have, and that have provided the inspiration we all need now. I wanna congratulate our graduates graduates, our 2021 Woman of Influence, Isis Jones, and our Women of Influence Lifetime Achievement winner, Lori Platt Hall. I want to thank again our sponsors, Jill S. Schwartz & Associates, Orlando Health, and Winnie Palmer Hospital for Women and Babies, our supporting sponsors, Orange Tree Staffing, and Winter Park Magazine, and a big thank you to the Citrus Council of Girl Scouts, y'all, because you got your cookies, and Lily Pulitzer, Jen Adams, and Farm Gal Flowers. Okay, go and be inspired. Thanks for spending time with us today.